All right, all right, all right. This is David, and it's Fed Day. And you know what you need to do on Fed Day? Subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like. Little contribution to the channel would go a long way. There's some links in the uh, description to get that done. And join me live at 9 o'clock and watch how we trade this market. So let's take a look, man. I mean, we'll rip through the markets, but they really don't mean anything. Nothing means anything until the uh, Fed comes out, makes its announcement, and we see which way it's going to go. But there's plenty to talk about in the market. Right now, you can see, um, just looking at CNBC, uh, everything's kind of flat. I mean, Dow's up 80, Futures up 9, NASDAQ up 9, oil popped. Oh, and interest rates ease down. That's interesting. I'm looking to buy TBT cheap. Um, so, so what's up? What's up is, okay, we got the Fed today, and that's really short-term news, and we're going to look at the interest rates, and that's cool. But what's interesting is um, Putin's uh, escalation. Um, this is very interesting. And uh, we also had Biden's comments that, uh, the USA will defend Taiwan. And that's pretty much pissing in their Cheerios. So th th this is making me leery for the long-term effect. Um, so Russia definitely is looking for rationale to um, get more aggressive. I mean, this gives him the opportunity to... Um, um, start recruiting or drafting, or they call it conscriptions, um, um, on, on uh, the younger population or the civilian population in Russia. So he's going to start pressing people into service. Uh, he's already mandated that his industry start producing um, uh, more weapons. So this guy's gearing up. I, I mean, they're, they're running out and they need to restock, but the guy's gearing up to... Um, to um, be combatant for a very long time and um, claiming that um, these regions are now Russia, right? Because he, he said that uh, th these regions said um, that they're going to um, um, vote on uh, a referendum to um, be annexed and part of Russia. And Putin says he's going to recognize it. I mean, it's just his move. Um, it also uh, keeps, makes it criminal for people in those regions to um, not want to fight. So even the citizens there who are Ukrainian, love U Ukraine, um, they could be pressed into service and um, condemned as criminals if they don't uh, join the fight. So very tactful. Um, a lot of people are worried that it would uh, encourage the use of nuclear weapons and, and you know, uh, tactical nuclear weapons and, and chemical weapons, um, which is a violation of... Um, the Geneva Convention, I believe, um, or at least uh, the rules of law. And um, I don't know if that's really his motivation. I think it's because he needs um, manpower and um, he needs some teeth in, in um, getting uh, military supplies and, and people behind him. But this is quite an escalation. And, it, I mean, Germany, I, the entire... Um, uh, NATO and the U.S. will not allow this guy to succeed either. So we have this grinding up, um, and we've got Putin swinging his dick. Um, I mean, uh, Biden Sweden swinging his dick over China. So, and I can't imagine those guys are going to step away from that. I mean, that was a basic, I dare you, you, you know, so I'm expecting some sort of um, response to that pretty quickly. Okay, so all that being said, now we have recession fears, right? So that's that's going to be a drag. That's going to be a really drag, real drag. Um, it's going, I mean, um, U.S. companies are going to have to get out of China, and they're probably going to get bounced. I mean, Europe's already looking at it as a, a closing market, and um, the investment in China has um, dropped considerably. And Europe was their number one trade partner. So they're going into a recession, um, so they're going to be buying less and trading less with China, and that's going to create tension. 
and the accusations are going to start flying. So I just see a, a spiraling deterioration right now of the world order. I mean, I think it's a readjustment, and ultimately we're coming out of this a lot stronger. Yet, you know, either um, they're going to get on the bandwagon and um, join the rest of the world, or the rest of the world's going to recognize that we can't have orderly, lawful peace and political resolutions with these two um, characters at the wheel. So um, ultimately, they're either going to ask them out and, um, you know, Russia and, 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 and China are going to, you know, deal together and we're going to get a new um, um, Iron Curtain, if you will, or all of the um, powerful money-making people in those countries are going to realize that they need to get these uh, these political heads out of the way and start um, moving in a more capitalist direction, which they were all on um, the, the bandwagon for quite some time. And actually, that's how um, the, the president of China got elected. I mean, this guy was seen as a real forward-thinking liberal kind of guy and uh, open to... Um, interacting with the West and, and creating uh, prosperity and, and and supporting capitalism in the country. And then he rolled around, got rid of um, everybody who could oppose him and um, just went pretty hard line. So, um, and they're suffering over there. I mean, you know, my interaction with the mainland Chinese um, business people here in the States who were first generation here in the States, so carried a lot of that uh, culture, um, they, they're very superstitious and um, they're, very, they're, they're good biz business people. Their theory is buyer beware, um, yet, you know, but they're very suspicious. So if there's a break in consistency, then that practice or th those policies or that business relationship is considered damaged goods and there's no repairing it. And my point is that um, they began to grow accustomed to doing business in China, being prosperous, being able to keep their money, having confidence in their products. Well, maybe not so much their products, but understanding their business and their government allowing them to do business. And now the government has betrayed that confidence. And that's going to be a deterioration of um, the Chinese business environment. Um, I think that the black market's going to proliferate there. Um, but the basic working individual is going to lose con or has already lost confidence in their ability to um, consistently make money or be prosperous in their region. And they're going to start burying their cash. Cash is going to be king. Um, the black market concept is going to be king. And they're going to um, start hoarding. And it's going to be a long, long time before they repair that. And even when they replace um, Zhang, I, I never know if I'm saying his name correctly, but uh, Zhang, um, even if they replace him, it's going to take them a long time before they believe uh, whatever rhetoric comes out of their government. And, and they're starting to lose the narrative over there, the government. They used to have great control, but now they're starting to lose the narrative. People are starting to realize that, you know, the rest of the world is not locking down like this. Um, and um, they're being um, really abused over there and controlled. And um, it's very interesting because now they have an app on the phone, and unless you have um, an authorization mark on your app and you could represent that um, to a store, you can't get into a store. So they're kind of linking this with the whole social credit concept. So basically, um, you have to have your app to go anywhere, to go into any store, get water, get food, anything like that. So they're tracking, and, and this is a COVID app. Um, so they're tracking the movement um, real time of every individual. And if they find you're in a, a COVID um, 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 risk area, then, you, you know, you get tagged and you can't um, go into stores and things like that. But they could do this now on a social credit basis. And really, they've just now managed to control their population down to, you know, the last minute. So um, so now if you don't have that, that um, approval on that app, 
you can't go anywhere. I mean, it used to be with the social credits that it, um, you, you can uh, be banned from um, taxis and trains and airplanes and things like that. So they were able to imprison people in their own communities. But now they could literally um, deny you um, sustenance, basically, or any privilege or any freedom or even the, self, the ability to sustain yourself, you, you know. And the tensions are growing there, man. The tensions are growing, you, you know. Um, so, uh, and they're also a major consumer, which is interesting. So, okay. So my point is that um, everybody's griping about recession here and looking at the economy. And the reality is that um, there's plenty of jobs out there and people are working. And, and um, the, the um, you know, to be in a recession or at least historically, recessions didn't have a very strong job market. Um, and initially, um, I believe that the job market would fall off and then we would get um, a couple of quarters of GDP recession. So, but that's not rule of thumb. You, you know, that, that, that's a general idea. That's not, you know, it, it, one's not, uh, um, it's not exclusive of, of one another. So, um the GDP has already pulled back. We've seen that, um, but we still have a job market. And people are screaming recession, 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 because it's cliche if GDP pulls back two quarters, we consider it a recession. Um, but um, there's there's an agency that has to declare um, or, or a, a government arm that has to declare that we're in a recession before we can call it a recession. But I mean, economically, it doesn't make sense. But okay, so normally you'd have um, job uh, um, uh, unemployment rising um, aggressively, and then you'd get uh, GDP uh, pullback. But it doesn't have to work that way. I mean, it could we could be in a situation because we're just coming out of the pandemic that um, get, you know GDP pulls back two quarters, and then um, the job market um, follows. Um, very likely, but um, my theory is that uh, the that we're seeing the GDP pull back because we had such aggressive growth coming out of the um, pandemic, um, and so that's not leading us into recession. Um, the job market is growing, um, but in specific areas, we're starting to see layoff in tech, and. Um, um, mostly tech, we're starting to see layoffs, but some big corporations are talking about it going forward, uh, also due to supply chain issues. But I believe that psychology is going to drag us into recession because now we have all these political headwinds, and I think that's going to create a psychological fear. And... Um, and then it'll be coupled by some economic uh, issues like, uh, you, you know, Europe's taking a beating right now. It's going to be a rough month, a rough winter for them. And there's not going to be a whole lot of spending coming out of there. That's going to hit the world economy. Um, and that's going to slow down. Um, and and again, you know, China is going to slow down over the next year. Obviously, Russia's off the market. So there's going to be a slowdown in business. A lot of these major employers here in the States have exposure to these other countries. They're going to have to change their business practice. And um, a lot of that business supports their 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 employment here, or a lot of the employment here is, is to support their business over in those areas. So we're going to see layoffs in that arena. So I think, I think, I think um, that we're going to see a trickle-down effect from political headwinds. So, yes, people are talking about a recession coming, but I think they're looking at the wrong reasons. And this, so we can't just say, okay, it, does, it doesn't matter because the recession is going to be here. Um, what we have to do is look at what's bringing on the recession so that we know how to approach it in our investing and if it's actually going to happen because um, we resolve these issues. Um, for some reason, uh, China comes out and says, ah, we have no interest in Taiwan and we're getting rid of this uh, bozo. And, and, and um, the Kremlin ends up throwing Putin under the bus saying, you know, the war criminal Putin 
and we don't want him running our country, and yet, you know, he took us down the wrong road, and we were misled, you know, they'll come up with all sorts of bullshit, like, sorry, let's move on to better things, not impossible, so um, th these things happen, and we're looking good, I don't think we have to worry about a, a, um, a recession, a deep recession, a prolonged recession, um, so, you know, we need to be watching the right things, and I don't think that um, everybody's watching the right things. Fed um, expected to raise interest rates today. Yeah, he's going to raise them. Um, I'm figuring about a. Uh, I'm fi well. Well, you know what? I don't know, man. I'm 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 going with the uh, 0.75. I'm in the middle because you got a buck or or, or half um, uh, 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 for uh, a basis point, and there's argument for all three. You know, um, so I'm just kind of figuring he's going halfway but I don't care you, you know I don't need to guess on it I'm not trading on it I'm trading after it so when he makes the decision I'll see which way the market goes and that's it um yeah you know I know um what I'm looking at if I want to be short the markets and I know what I'm looking at if um I want to be long the markets I just don't know what I want to be until this cat comes out um well, no, yeah, you know what? My bias is short the markets, really, with all the political headwinds. So, um, so that's what we're watching. But um, there's nothing here that um, that is going to solve the problem here in the states. We have a supply um, issue, we have a a, a labor issue, and um, nobody's addressing the issues that are are creating inflation. Um, yeah, you know, they just going at it robotically what they've done in the past i don't think this uh, situation that the interest rate hikes are so are going to be effective i believe that the interest rates need to go back up it's ridiculous to have such cheap interest rates people should make money lending money um but it's not going to cure the problem and i i think they see that i think that um they just figure in the interim they might as well get back to normal which is cool take some of the volatility out of the market um yeah, you know, the swings, the monthly swings are, are, are just ridiculous, really. I, I mean, historically, the market swings maybe 119 points, um, the, the S&P 500, 119 points um, um, a month. And um, I mean, we need to get back to that. And, and percentage wise, maybe it's about 130 points. We need to see it swing monthly. So we need to get back to that um, sense of orderly uh, um, growth. Which you could see the 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 change after um, like two thousand six, when they started um, quantitative easing and all of that to support the economy, and then it got really aggressive um, after the pandemic, where they started dumping more money into the markets and shit. So we need to get back to a sense of normality. So I could uh, go with the interest rates, but two different um, issues, you, you know, a, a recession going forward, and interest rates now. So, um, so. That's it, man. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, that's what we got to look at, really. And I mean, we'll see what the Fed does today, but that's fine. But what's more important is um, our relationships um, with with China and 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 um, and Russia, and which way they're going. And look, we we may not have a deep recession. I mean, I don't think we're going to have a routing in the housing markets like we had in um, two thousand six, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, um, and. If you study this stuff, um, look at 2006, because that's when the telltale signs started coming out, and that's when we started seeing it. And uh, by 2008, it was all over the street, all over the, the public. And, and um, so we're just at the forefront of uh, what's going on. But again, I don't see it that deep. I don't, uh, you know, I think our economy is going to be relatively strong. I think we're going to remain the place to be. And that's what our markets are going to experience. We're going to take a little beating. We're going to get back to a fairly decent value, but all the world is going to invest here because Europe's going to have a long, hard fight to get out of this and get around this unless, you know, Russia um, smartens up. And the everybody's money is going to want to be here in the states so that's going to help us um that's going to help the markets um and that's going to help um, um capital spending and 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 kind of stabilize employment not to mention there's tons of jobs out there that we don't have people to fill them. so um yeah uh, but prolonged recession that's um what i think we're going to see um maybe three years worth.
So we're probably really wrecking. Maybe, yeah, we might go to 2005, 2006. Um, hard knock times. And really, I'm cashing up, man. I'm cashing up because I think there's going to be a lot of good shit around um, that I'm going to want to buy. Not just equities, but I'm talking about um, properties and um, equipment and things uh, of that nature that, um, that are very expensive right now. Um, like I'm looking at a tractor for um, my property. And um, I mean, what I was paying seven grand for maybe six years ago is like twice that, like $14,000. You, you know, it's like just ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you see it in automobiles and stuff, um, dump trucks, things like that, um, construction equipment, uh, just really, really, um, really top heavy in price right now. And um, I'm expecting all that shit to uh, come down. So if you want to buy some toys, hold out about a year. And uh, I think you can get uh, bigger toys for the same price or the same toys cheap. All right. So anyway, all right, that's me battling. Uh, let's take a quick look. Now, we're just doing a quick armchair because it really doesn't matter, man. Um, you know, nothing matters until the market's done. Um, what are we doing? I mean, you know, this is a head and shoulders pattern, but... Um, Th th this head and shoulders would be at the top of a run. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, it generally shows the attitude of the investor. And you, well, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, you could you could argue, and we're looking at the S&P 500 right now. I know I'm a little out of order, but like I said, we're armchairing it. But you, you know what? Honestly, I, I mean, that's a downtrend. Um I would probably just hold um, a support right here. <clears throat> and I'd watch that for uh, my my bearish move. Um, in the alternative, if we're... And again, we, we got to look at it from both sides because we don't know what the market's going to look like after the Fed. Um, so um, again... Um, uh, yeah, you could look. The, you 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 could see a divergence here, a bullish divergence. So, um, your entry would be up here. So, yeah, I guess you just play the channel, man. There's really no um, no science to it. So, just be neutral, pending a break of the high or the low. I mean, if you want to get aggressive, this. Um, hammer looking uh, bar. I'm not going to call it a hammer because it should be at the bottom of, of a run, but this hammer looking bar could be your entry breaking the high, which it did already. Um, yeah, is this today's bar? You never know with this software. Yeah, it's today's bar. So um, that's it, man. Watch this channel and really trade that way. It's a pretty big channel. I mean, the you know, the baby's got to move. This is a 240 chart, but this is a swing trade. Um, if we're looking at a daily, um, at daily trades, I'm probably going to drop to my half hour chart and um, figure it out there. So, I mean, this isn't as attractive as the long term swing chart because you have all this congestion right here to fight through. But um, look, we're building a, a bull flag right now, but I, I wouldn't be too aggressive about it. I don't even see anything here that I like. Maybe um, I remain bullish. Um, as long as we stay above here, you know, but I don't see how I'd really enter on, on a bullish. I mean, we could probably, um, create a pennant. What's up? There we go. Create a pennant right here. Even this pivot. I mean, you, you can see it's respecting it very well, but I, I don't even like that pivot yet. I mean, I'd like to see a further move down to really count that pivot, but it looks like it's respecting it pretty well. You could probably watch that, but um, I mean, this is a 30-minute chart, and I wouldn't take that trade because we got the feds out there. So um, so that's it. I mean, I'm just going to wait and see what the feds got to do. I just don't want to trade ahead of that. Um, yeah, you know, it's just too disorderly for me. And I don't like gambling. Yeah, I think I'm going to have a lot of this problem on this uh, video. Damn, software sucks. Um, 
So, yeah, that's it. That's what I'm looking at for the markets. Um, I think Amazon, Apple, all, all these guys are pretty much going to be the same. I mean, you're in the same position. I don't have to drill down into everything. Um, oil, which, yeah, the software still screwing me up. Um, I can't get... Um, I can't get any oil charts up, um, which I'll bet that I can't get my RBOBs up, which they're not there. Um, so we can't really talk about it, but oil's up, man. Um, gold is up, and that's probably on war fears. Look at that, seven points. I haven't seen a move like that in gold in quite some time. Um, let's look at uh, gas, gasoline, gasoline spiked. This is all, this is knee-jerk reaction. This is all on um, Putin, Putin talking. But, I mean, it's really, it shouldn't really affect us. I mean, we're producing. We haven't made any concessions to um, Europe that we're going to ship more, although we're exporting more than we ever have before. But um, I think it'll ease up some room for... Um, we're producing more, although the industry is fearful because the Democrats are in office and whenever they go make a move, they get smacked down, you know, so they make an investment to start producing and then they get smacked down a few years later from some Democrat who doesn't worry about people working but wants to make a name for themselves, um, which I agree with um, um, getting off of fossil fuels, but you need a plan and you, you need to implement it slowly so that you don't cause tons of people to lose um, their jobs and, you, you know, have nowhere to go. I mean, just doesn't seem like that's how they handle things. Um, so anyway, um, I'm bullish on our Bob pending a uh, break of this line. And, and I mean, we're just going to have to get some clarity on what's going on over uh, in the Ukraine. Uh, before we start seeing oil and nat gas and gasoline start easing down. <clears throat> it's nat gas on the daily, which it's creating a bear flag. Um, everything's very bearish, and, and it doesn't look like, is it giving it to me? No, this is yesterday's bar. So we're, we're up 20 cents. Um And we have a daily bear flag. Are we on the... No, it stayed on the 60. All right, let's do that. There we go. There we go. All right, so... That's an oldie. Well, I mean, obviously we're in an uptrend right here. So it looks uh, like the, the like oil looked. Um, I'd call this a good resistance right here. So it looks like it's going to grind up a little bit. I mean, I would be bullish right here, but I mean, a lot of congestion to grind up in here. I don't think it's going to get too aggressive, you know, um, maybe half a buck from here. So around 850. I'd say that's a uh, that's probably our greatest risk on heating oil. It's a shame because everything was moving down. It looked like it was going to ease up, but this cat was smooth. I mean, he, he wants to hurt um, everybody, and this is his opportunity to do it. Um, let's take a look at, well, BTC is going to trade like, um, like the indices. So we'll just leave that alone. And bonds, bonds, but bonds, bonds, bonds. What's going on with bonds? I can't, oh, okay. I can't see the whole chart. Um. Is that today's? Yep, that's today. All right. So um, it pushed down a little bit yesterday. I mean, you know, we're looking at the dailies and bond prices are uh, moving down, but they look like they're bouncing up a little today. But again, you, you can't really count on it. Take all this with a grain of salt. So in short, really, you just kind of hung out with me because everything I did, you have to take with a grain of salt, except for um, my re recession views. I think that um, at this point... Um, I don't think that um, economic indicators are pointing to a recession. And economic indicators um, 
kind of show um, a strong economy, just readjusting a little bit. But with all the political headwinds and um, the, the probable uh, results, I think that um, now is the time to gear up for the recession. That, um, you know, it. I mean, the idea that um, Putin is turning this into a war instead of a special action changes his um, abilities. And um, this may very well prompt the U.S. to supply long-range missiles to, um, to um, the Ukraine. So we don't want to escalate everything, but... We can't let this cocksucker win because, you know, that, that's just going to um, encourage um, China's move. Um, so the world needs to be um, united against this sort of aggression and um, show conviction. And um, I think that um, escalation is inevitable. I mean, I don't think it'll ever get to a nuclear war, but um, this is going to escalate. And um, he may have the support of uh, China. I think that's what this meeting was about. I think he kind of let China know that he was taking this to uh, the next level. And um, that's why he came out and made those statements that China has concerns. Because China said, okay, you could take this to the next level. We got you back, but you got to make us look good. Um, and... Um, I think that's what it was. They just put up airs. Um, so, so anyway, um, we'll see what happens today. Um, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like. Join me at 9 o'clock, live trading. We could talk, ask questions, um, get me into a rant. My buddy Anthony um, is, is like the master at that. He knows how to push my buttons and get me ranting. Um, so um, – I say my buddy, but um, I really, um, we just know each other through chatting, but he's been supporting the channel for a year, and he chats with me, um, and um, he just knows how to push my buttons. So um, so anyway, join us um, at 9 o'clock and push a button. Uh, so yeah, I, I recommend, don't worry about missing um, trades today. Um, I like probabilities. I trade when the probabilities are stacked in my f favor. Too many variables right now. Market's going to be whippy. You don't know where the market's going. I don't think it's going to be orderly trading. Personally, I'm going to be sitting on my hands. If I see a real sweet setup, I'm going to have to take it, but it better be a sweet setup. Um, so um, just you know, calm and cool. Be at peace. Don't feel any pressure when you're trading, and good luck with your trades.